but once it's open, there will be many people who will come for out of curiosity, if nothing else, and they will find it. I have actually read the books before. They were published in the Korean language, but this is the first one specifically about Korea, published in the Korean language. Yes. But, but exciting things are happening in the, in the Korean Peninsula. Hanbando is going to be the most exciting part of the world uh, in the next 10 or 20 years, once the 38th parallel opens. This is the right place to be in the world, not in Asia, in the world. To be a successful investor, you have to be curious and think independently. One of my ends, um, if I've had any success, it is by finding things that were very depressed and cheap where there was positive change taking place. And if you can find positive change, or if you can find change, you will probably be a successful investor. In the north, they have lots of natural resources and a lot of cheap, disciplined, educated labor. In the south, you have access to vast amounts of capital, and you have fabulous manufacturing ability. The north has been staggering amounts of money on defense, gigantic parts of its economy are spent on defense. In the South, you spend a lot of money on defense. Soon, think of all the money you're going to save to spend on something else. Every Korean male alive today has spent his whole life worrying about getting killed. They don't have to worry anymore. They might get killed, but not, but not by war. Well, I've been in North Korea twice. I've been in 2007. Again in 2013. Uh, the first time it was uh, despondent. It was gray. The main impression I got was there was a lot of propaganda calling for unification. So I knew that the North Korean populace had been brainwashed or propagandized into wanting unification and knowing that unification was good. Other than that, there was not much happening. The second time I went to Raju, and it was different, it was 2013, the old man had died, and I could see there was, a, there was capitalism developing, there were markets, thousands of people in the markets, with lots of products. It was much, much more vibrant than the first time. They asked me to invest, there were lots of they made, give, gave me all sorts of guarantees and incentives to invest there. They were looking for international foreign investors. I had to explain to them, I would like to, but my, and you would like for me to, not your government, my government. My government would not let me invest in North Korea. No, not, I'm not, my optimism is not based on unification. My optimism is based on the opening of the 38th parallel. Is wrong. Once you have open markets, open access of people and capital, then this will be very exciting, whether there's unification or not. Unification will probably come someday, but the first thing is to open, tear down the 38th paradigm. Uh, North Korea wants this. Uh, Mr. Kim has wanted it since he got there. South Korea wants it. Russia wants it. China wants it. Japan is against it because Japan does not want it. knows it cannot compete with an open Korea. There's nothing Japan can do. They're doing everything they can to disrupt, but they cannot stop it in the end. The problem is the American army. This is the only place in the world that the American army can have troops stationed on the Russian border and the Chinese border, so they don't want to leave. And that's why there's a problem, because the American army doesn't want to leave which of course means when the war comes, you're in it, whether you want to be or not. But one way or another, eventually, this is going to be resolved because too many people want it to happen. Well, the North, whenever there's a, a new frontier, uh, it's, and, and the North is a catastrophe. You know, as recently as 1970, North Korea was richer than South Korea. Well, communism and the Kims can ruin anything and they ruined North Korea. There are enormous opportunities in the North because it's, they don't have anything. They don't have tablecloths, they don't have electricity. They don't have anything. The 
South Korean companies have study groups figuring out what to do once the opportunity is there. So could they know what's coming? And everybody wants to invest and take advantage of the opportunities. There used to be a railroad up the East Coast and one up the West Coast that was being rebuilt. They will open again. You will tie into the Trans-Siberian Railroad into the One Belt, One Road project in China. So the peninsula will become a transportation hub again. The Korean Peninsula has never been on the, anybody's tourism map, certainly not the world tourism map for many really historic reasons. People think of traveling, even if they think of traveling to Asia, they don't think of Korea. But once it's open, there will be many people who will come out of curiosity, if nothing else, and they will find beaches, mountains, temples, many beautiful buildings. Some people like Korean food. So a lot of, there are a lot of reasons to come here, and that will attract more people. So there are many things that are going to happen once you open up. You mentioned various and sundry areas, but the whole place, I mean, they don't have anything. And you've been closed for many decades. And all of this is going to open and change. First of all, I'm not Korean, so you should do it your way. You already have Washington, D.C. telling you what to do, even though most Americans couldn't find Korea on the map. Most Americans don't know where you use chopsticks. Most Americans know nothing about it. But you have a few bureaucrats in Washington telling you how to live and what to do. You don't need another American telling you what to do. But I will tell you what I would do, even though you don't have to listen. I would go to the 38th parallel. And I would have, I would take down the, the mines and the fences, and I would have a K-pop concert in the summer, not in the winter. Opened it free to everybody in the world. You put on the Olympics, it cost you a lot of money. You didn't get much from it. But if you had a free and open K-pop concert, it wouldn't cost much. Everybody in the world would try to come. I want you to get me a ticket too. Uh, they would all come. You open and take down the fences, people would come and go as they wished. They could take their money in and out as they wished. And a huge, gigantic change would start in Han Panda. And after that, nature would take its course. Human beings, if they're unfettered, find opportunities and exploit opportunities. Both of you are very controlled and restricted and closed uh, and regulated. But if you open that border, people would come and go. I assure you, lots of people would think of lots of things to do. You would have to do something about the bureaucratic mentality which exists in both places. It makes you so controlled and regulated. But if you could eliminate the bureaucratic mentality, oh my gosh, this would be really exciting. You might read it, buy the book. <laughs> but if you do buy the book and read it, Let's change career and make it right.